The title of the show, Cultivating the Empty Field, comes from a, a book of works by Chinese Zen master Hong Zi, a book of writings, and for me the show collects together two different ideas, one about the land and landscape, and the other is about a sort of an Eastern looking concept or idea of how the creative moment happens, or rather, what happens just before the creative moment. So it's that uh, either a joyful or existential spark or moment before the creative act. There's a very contemporary view of the landscape and a very materials based and modern look at the urban built environment and the rural context as well. When we look at uh, Mirren Kelleher's work over here, so Mirren would have co contained in her work and the elements through wind uh, uh, being involved in the making of the works. So the, 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 she set up a machine or a sculpture which actually guided the, um, the mark making and there's a fan I believe attached. So there's, for me there's a happy coincidence there with the elements that are included within the work itself. energetic free form, uh, metal form, and complements, I believe, the work. For me, this was an obvious inclusion with my Easter leanings and interests, this very calligraphic and, and painterly almost a Zen study and also quite ritualistic when you see quite closely all the intricate, intricate writing that she's got uh, in concentric circles here. The whole thing of, of painting mm -hmm. and drawing mm -hmm. to me has been trying to explain the world to myself. Okay. You know, that's, that's the way I, I look at the whole thing. I, I got fascinated by uh, um, some trees uh, in towards Cork. Um, so it was a, a big hillside. You'd, you'd see it on, on, the, on the Lee Road up on, on your left. Um, and they were, they were oak. Uh, and uh, uh, so they, they were part of a, a forest up the, the upper part of the, the hillside. Then the hillside came down, and, and it was it was grazed by animals, you know, uh, whatever. So you had different ridges uh, in in the grass, and then uh, um, you know bigger kind of architectural ridges, like you see there uh, on, on the, the the left hand panel. Um, and then they were ambiguous, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. at, at at one they were the surface, mm -hmm. and at two then they were suggesting strata. In this case, then. I left out to kind of pick up the, the, the naturally occurring grain in the, 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 the plywood. So that's, that's forming a nice elegant shape and uh, drawing in behind it. Mm -hmm. But on this part of the screen, there were a couple of, let's call them defects, where the, the, the ply mm -hmm. didn't, uh, didn't match. So there, there was a little gap uh, that, uh, in, in those two places. And I thought, uh, rather than try and hide that gap, mm -hmm. or ignore it, pretend it wasn't there, but I would uh, bring it out. During the COVID lockdown, we started to work outside. So this was our, our mental health. Mm -hmm. This was uh, mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. But then comes the documenting of that. Yes. I saw the old Roman mosaics for the first time. So mm -hmm. Carthage and uh, Seuss and, and so on. And the organization, the colors, the juxtaposition of things, subject matter, but they, they were, a lot of them had patterns about their, their construction. A, a frieze around the, the edges and then I've, in the corners I've got uh, four of the implements that, that I would use when, I, when, I, when I'd be make, uh, cutting wood. So the, 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 the upper part of it is coloured pencil mm -hmm. and graphite and then the, the lower part of it is the graphite and then just uh, the coloration. Another artist's work is Dennis O'Reardon, uh, whose work here, I believe a number of these paintings were used as backdrops for theatres, uh, theatre plays. These are very, very uh, 
intricately finished paintings with uh, acrylic on canvas, which obviously touch on the theme of the landscape within the exhibition, but there's a, clearly an urban landscape aspect going on here as well. But with the uh, kind of eastern looking or eastern uh, leanings in the show as well, it was a nice coincidence to discover that Dennis had been out to India and lived a number of years with Sai Baba. And uh, there's a kind of a there's a kind of an attention to detail that I think can be seen and a, an influence from that space as well. Again, there's themes of the land going on here with the, the barbed wire, but there's uh, kind of a, an obvious moment where I put this together with Michael Quayne's work here. Incredible objects, these arcane sculptures made of a ceramic with their own handmade plinths. One of the artists who I first came across from McCroom was Bernice Corcoran and uh, Bernice brought me in a good number of works for the exhibition and I was to, I was to select a number of those out of the, the group that she brought in. But they were so nice together that I included all of them. So it's probably better when it's misty and soft because it kind of softens the, the, the kind of dark mm -hmm. images that you can see there, sure. like the sorts of trees, yes. you know, they can, they can scare people a little bit, right. you know. The work is all quite small because I've been very economical as well. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I actually really like working in it and sometimes I zoom in. Just sure. like that square sure. centimeter there. Sure. I've always been drawn to, um, especially Chinese sure. ink drawings. Sure, you can see it. Very early, very early yeah. Chinese ink drawings. Yeah, yeah, I love those. Like, I do love to work outside, yes. but I can't work if there's people around. Right. And it was during the winter, that's the, actually the only time I like to be there, because okay. that's usually when the water is down. You can see the old marshes yeah. and old walls and old gates and maybe an old road or something yeah. like that. These are very intimate, calligraphic, small studies, which she calls drawings, but um, they're really quite painterly in a lot of ways. And uh, to see them together like this, I really think they start to have a dialogue with, the, with each other. Um, but they've been very popular in uh, the response to them has been great for people coming to visit the show. So one of the challenges in putting together an exhibition like this is seeing how we can set up relationships between different styles of work and materials within the space. And Victoria Brennan, to make these wonderful side tables for the exhibition, um, works here in the Prum. I believe she works up in the Chapel Hill uh, School of Art, or there's studios there. So I've put these quite close to John Philip Murray's screen piece over here, the wooden screen of the, the landscape, and you're trying to set up different uh, dialogues between materials within the space. As a, as a painter myself, it's been great to include artists like Jill Dennis in the show. Um, for me, this is for where I'm comfortable at. Uh, I understand, I love, and I work with painting for much of my career. And this space of semi-abstract reaction to the landscape is it's both materialistic and a joy to look at. Obviously, what attracts you and what attracts me will be different, mm -hmm. so what you do will be very different with that space than mm -hmm. what I do with it. Mm -hmm. I suppose you're, in a way, you're trying to layer it. Okay. So that it works both up and across. Okay. And one way of getting a depth is to put a horizontal layer in. Right. And I suppose the, the other way, in terms of getting you to move up and down, is linkages. If you follow that down, yes. You start hitting things. Yes. So that would bring you across then, is it? Well, it, through? it would take you up and down. Okay. So it's, you're either linking by structure or colour. This isn't always consciously done, but when you put them up, because you're working outside yes. and they're flat. Are you working on these outside? Oh, yeah. Oh, well. And they're flat. And when you put them up, up inside, I can't speak, that's when you begin to see the linkages. Sure because the canvas you can't cut. Right. 
whereas these you probably could chop. And, and is that part of the process? Was this a wider piece that no, you cut down? No, they, they, they weren't, but the, it's almost like the freedom's there to do it. Sure, sure. If you're a painter who likes paint and uses it physically, no matter what medium that is, then you're bound to have an abstract element in it because of the actual use in the actual physical stuff. And I think the mark making's been a... I'm, I almost try not to get rid of it because you can easily tidy them up. Mm -hmm. This is a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> it's a real challenge not no. to fix it. Not to, not fix, to it. fix it, you know? Here we have Sarah Flaherty's work, which uh, is a much more ephemeral reaction to an almost lost moment of just looking at uh, a polytunnel from the outside, the, the, the plants, or the, the abandoned plants pushing from pushing out to the inside and you know, this is a very understated and, and simply presented work that I, I think really fits well and complements the other landscape work in the exhibition. These works uh, really fit in the exhibition on this slightly larger uh, scale of glass work that she makes. So this is fused glass technique and uh, it, it really is like a painting in glass. What to say about Plume Volker and her uh, amazing uh, art jewellery? The whole exhibition um, uh, has been good for me because it forced me to think and to think of why I do think, <laughs> not why I do think, but why I do things. Mm -hmm. There is a making part, there is a kind of the whole psychotherapy part or the psychological part where I have to think or to feel or to go inside really that mm -hmm. there's an external thing and an internal thing mm -hmm. and <laughs> the misery of it right. that you say what am i doing why am i doing it how is it going i have a need to do it i don't want to do it i have to go somewhere where i don't want to go at all mm -hmm. i want to watch netflix mm -hmm. day and night <laughs> right so i don't have to do this well, I think this whole thing for me is an awareness training. It is digging in, finding out why you're doing things, why you're feeling the things you're feeling, and then kind of a, a, a cleansing process in that I have made this now, can I let it go? Has I, have I gone far enough? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, there's a consciousness about mm -hmm. it. I mean, I know what I'm doing. I'm not kind of just throwing it out. It's, mm -hmm. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not... I'm they're there, the symbols and, and everything. So the confession box is about guilt and shame and, and but purification. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, that's how it is. Uh, well, yeah, that's that one, my father's mark. That aspect, the green one, mm -hmm. is uh, resin. Okay. But he was a China uh, expert on Chinese ceramics. And uh, jade was part of his... Mm -hmm. he, he admired the Chinese mm -hmm. tremendously. So that is that part, mm -hmm. but I put it in a fake jade. Mm -hmm. um, then, of course, the, the steel things is to keep the two things together. Mm. And then the other side is he had a signet ring, yes. and that's his mark. And that mark, when you wear it, uh, marks your... your oh, I see. That, that is part, in a way, of, of, mm. of bringing out the inside to the outside, mm -hmm. that you're not showing this beautiful outside mm. Well, I should... While it's kind of toxic on the inside, yes, yes, yes. So it 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 comes out and then it it clarifies and it is also beautiful. Mm -hmm. I make, I mean, well, yeah, chaos, mm -hmm. absolute and total chaos, stuff everywhere mm -hmm. and whatever, and then slowly it goes. Then there's a just tiny point of. Um, I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. then something starts to happen. Mm -hmm. Plume's background in art, painting, jewellery making and psychotherapy can really clearly be seen here. There's something being worked out here. There's some psychological pain or torture that's being voiced and being brought into form. And uh, it's really a, a great coincidence that it's the, we can have these works in the show for Core Craft Month.